Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Alpha Craft. So you can probably tell I am, I've been sick. <laughs> um, it's starting to pass, I didn't really get anything done all weekend, I apologize. Um, I tried to do a bit of recording, but uh, yeah, it just wasn't, it wasn't about to happen, and I, I wasn't in the mood to really get anything done, but it's starting to pass today. So I kind of wanted to get a little bit of a little bit of work done. Um, basically, the back end of Saturday, I got the whole sore throat congestion type thing. Sunday, I had this horrible headache all day. Didn't do anything. Um, it, it was mainly because you know I was coughing so much that I was you know getting a headache. And uh, um, so I didn't really get a whole lot accomplished this weekend. Um, just kind of rested up and and all that jazz so um it is starting to clear out but yeah it's still still got a little ways to go now over here um luckily luckily when i had all that going i had plenty of time to think and this is actually from when i tried to start a recording but uh, yeah it just i ended up rambling and talking for too long and <laughs> and uh Basically what this is, we've got a little like cave that I started digging out not very far down, just right to there. And so all, like during the weekend and stuff, since I had a lot of time to sit and think, I was thinking, because there's two, well there's three major things that I want to finish before we start moving on, continuing on with the build. This is excluding um, some collab building that I've got to get done, um, that I'll be working on, uh, which those videos will just come out whenever, um, you know, the collab situation is ready to post them right so um but there's a couple things that i want to get done around the base before we start moving on to the next build the first thing is we need to finish the nether tunnels we're going to be working on that like maybe one more episode of that um and probably a few days more work on that <laughs> it's basically what we got left over there um and then i also want to flesh out the mine and i want to get some sort of a sorting system going because in order for me to actually do the mine, I need to get all these chests out of the way, but I don't want to just dump them somewhere at random. So what we're going to be working on today is starting into our storage area, our, our big storage area. Of course, we're going to have those depositories only in places where they make sense. So near the mine will be stone depository, you know, near the lumber mill will be a wood depository um, and so on and so forth, right? Um, near the farms will be like a, a crop depository stuff like that but those are more for lower um size storage right they're not for just big bulk storage and i want to start working on the place where we're going to start storing up our big bulk stuff so long story short i'm going to talk more about this during the speed builds the speed build segment um i don't want to spend a whole lot of time rambling when i can ramble here in a minute but long story short we're going to have this in an underground system Okay, and right now what I'm going to work on is I'm going to work on connecting this little segment over because we're going to have different um, different exits from this underground area. And the first one I'm going to be connecting up to is the mine. Then I'm going to connect over probably to where the Druid Enclave is and then we'll see. So uh, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and start working on this. Um, I will do speed mining because it's actually requested quite often. Uh, so you guys can watch that like super fast mining uh, bit. So anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into that. And I'll finish talking about what we're going to be working on. Okay, so starting out, I'm just kind of digging into this side of the mountain. This is basically where we're going to start out um, our tunnel work. And uh, I tried to do the best I could with the camera here because we are in really tight quarters at first. So, anyways, we're just kind of digging down. Um, this is actually the area that you guys saw, but I still had the footage. Just I didn't like my intro, so I changed it. Uh, but anyways, pushing on, basically the first thing I want to do is I've got the coordinates to where the mine is at. So we're basically just going to plug up into the mine, like the interior of the mine, right? And sorry, my voice is still gone. <laughs> um, but anyways, you can see I've shot on ahead because it's really hard to keep up because... What you're watching, what you'll be watching today is like five or six hours of work all in the course. You're going to be watching it over the course of like 10 minutes, you know. So it is quite sped up just so we get a lot in this episode. Uh, but I did connect it to the mine. It was pretty quick there, but we'll walk through it a little bit later. So 
Um, and right now what I've done is I've got the coordinates and we're plugging basically up to where the Druid Enclave is going to be. Trying to give ourselves some different um, entrances and exits. And now the crazy camera work that you guys just witnessed is pretty much over at this point. Uh, we're able to start slowing down because we're working in sort of a larger area or more of a, a centralized area. We're basically starting what's going to be the first little segment of our storage system which it is very, very much an unorthodox storage system. But I just thought going with just a storage building, no matter how I did it, it's going to be boring. It's going to be bland. It's going to be just walls of chests and, and stuff like that. I mean, the depositories work for certain things, right? They work for stone. They would work for like nether stuff. They would work for certain classifications of things. But there's certain things that just kind of don't fit with other things and don't really necessitate having their own depository where we would dump off materials after we've been working in an area. So, I decided to just go with like kind of a, a more dense storage area um, with more like specific sorting spices and stuff like that that we can easily expand on. And the easiest way to make something that we can easily expand on, make it underground, right? Because we can just keep digging out as needed and adding more space to everything. Now, it's not going to be cramped and it's gonna you know if you're getting stuff out of the dense storage system um you know it's not really built for okay i need five of this two of the you know it's meant for dumping lots of stuff in here and then if i'm starting a build project grabbing you know a few stacks of different things right and so i will say that we don't get a whole lot of the storage aspect done that's this episode it's basically just getting it all started you can see i've got a massive amount of digging out to do um, and actually watching back it back through it uh, to make sure the camera was all nice and everything I was like, oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm actually enjoying watching myself zoom around and mine all this stuff and watch how much it changed uh, From the part where I was first digging it out to its finished product, right? So my goal here is to build something underground and I'm, I'm going with of course above ground We've kind of got a style, right? I mean, we're gonna add some hobbit houses and different little things like that But overall we've got a style. It's very naturist and uh, Of course the lunar citadel is gonna be a little bit different the inner city is gonna be a little bit different But overall we've still got kind of our style right? Underground I can have a bit more fun with it because my idea was and lore wise um, What I have in mind is going with uh, basically going with the idea that this used to be these were the residents, the caves were used by the residents before, uh, you know, the elves and all these like humanoid or free races came and took it over, right? So the idea is these caves, and, and that was actually based on, a, there was a movie and it's an old story called uh, The Goblin Princess, or The Princess and the Goblin, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but there's an old story and there was a there was an animated film when I was younger that was made about it, you know, where these goblins lived underground underneath this castle or the city. And they had these like huge caves and stuff like that. It's kind of loosely based on that, uh, not super directly. And we're gonna make it a lot more lush than what it was, you know, in that in that animated film. But um, just just kind of working from recollection, I remember a lot of like wood bridges and wood structures and stuff like that in it. And uh, that's kind of my idea to a degree. Um, we're gonna have some wood bridges. We're gonna have some wooden structures down in here. Um, what what we get done today is kind of limited to just this small area so you know it's it's still very much a work in progress this is basically another mega build that uh, may continue to expand throughout the entire season we'll see until it's just this massive underground cave network but my idea is that uh, we'll have this huge open uh, cave area uh, that goes through and it has different different styles that we can play with because we can make cavernous areas that don't have a lot of growth in them we can make overgrown areas because you know we have the druid on clay that's kind of breathing all this life this overabundance of life into the world right and we can also do ruins down here which is pretty cool and then in addition um we can also just have some fun and make you know mushroom type areas kind of like the ones in terraria where there's like the big mushrooms and stuff like that we can do all kinds of stuff down in here and just kind of have some fun in this spice and, and, you know, because the abundance of, if you look at like fantasy type caves, they're not, they're usually not really, really static, right? They're, there's a whole lot of different things going on. So the area that we are working on right now, since it is kind of an entrance into the area, it's not like a deep cavern or anything like that. Um, 
we're kind of mixing in a little, we'll be mixing in a little bit of overgrowth. Um, and uh, you can see right here, I'm coming through with grass. I'm about to make it grassy. Um, we will add some variation to that, but we're going to be going with kind of some overgrowth and then also a little bit of taste of ruins. Um, and actually one of the pathways um, before too long will be going into uh, more heavy ruins. So, uh, but basically I'm just getting a grass palette down just so that we can work from and you know, it makes it a little bit easier than working from stone because the ground there is not going to be primarily stone, to say the least. Now, right here, this is um, kind of a little bridge that we're building, and this is what I actually came up with when I was waiting for um, confirmation if I was joining AlphaCraft. Um, playing with those, it's not my big bridge design that uses the campfires and the lecterns, but we can use that and we can make a nice wooden bridge. It feels kind of rickety, feels kind of old. Um, and we'll take a closer look at that a little bit later. So it's just basically campfires strung out across that chasm there. And uh, and now we're starting to add some of the overgrowth into this section, just giving a little bit of greenery. And the idea is the pathway above us is gonna be part stone, part wood, maybe put some part cobblestone and stuff like that. Um, and just kind of kind of rickety feeling. And there'll be parts of that are wood and, and just all different, it's basically, we're basically just having some fun with it. Making it feel like, you know, maybe it used to be this goblin cave, but the elves have kind of taken over. They've breathed, they've breathed all this life into it, and it's just became more lush in, in spots, not the entire thing. And basically, <laughs> the storage will be scattered throughout these caves. So, um, But we'll have lots of space, so if we need to expand on it, we can. Uh, you know, whenever I first set this up, I basically I basically got three items slotted in right now, and have they have homes. And uh, it's going to take a long time to fill them up, but we've got a bit of space for them and we can easily expand and make more space. And of course, showing what is in and what chest is also kind of fun because we can use signs, we can use item frames, we can use blocks. Uh, and it's just, it's a little bit more interesting than just having a wall of chests, I think. Um, albeit not as um, convenient, but like I said, I'm not doing an auto sorting system, so we can have a little bit more fun with it, I think. And right here, you can see I'm starting to add kind of an, an archway, like an old ruined archway kind of thing um, that's right in here. And this is where we're going to start having some of the ruins coming in um, over here. And you can see the pathway to the left is a little bit more like overgrown, nature-y. There's wood and stuff like that. There is cobblestone stairs and cobblestone slabs acting as stairs. Um, the lakes, I'm doing a combination of soul sand, prismarine, gravel, that kind of stuff to make them feel kind of enchanted and kind of magical. They got some sea lanterns for the lights. Um, so I think, and, and I've got to say by the end of this first little bit, I was like, I was, I was walking through it. I was like, oh man, this is going to be awesome. It's going to take a ton of work because just, just this episode, I think I used, um, like 12 or 13 stacks of dark oak leaves. Not to mention tons of dark oak and tons of just a lot of things, but um, you can see I've added the the kind of the lushness. It's not as overgrown as above ground, uh, but it is still fairly overgrown in this little segment. And you can see the chests there um, with melons, pumpkins, and hay bales around them. So now we're continuing on and um, basically just bringing these ruined sections around, finishing out the overgrowth and doing the small touch-ups that need to be done. Um, nothing, nothing overly major. Um, to it, but uh, just kind of basically carrying through all the stuff that we had started. And then right here, we're going to just spend a little bit of time digging some more space out. Um, this area I did kind of finish off, but I've never intended for it to actually be the end of this cavern, so I don't know why I did all that. But um, Basically just digging out this because the cavern's going to continue on off in this direction. It's actually going to plug up into our mine because originally my plan was for the mine to be really open right going down to the mining areas it wasn't going to be like a tunnel or anything like that for the footpath down to the mine but then i decided you know what we're just going to plug it into this cavern so we can connect it all um into this cave and I actually have a name for the cave which we'll talk about later it is kind of a reference but i love i love the show so we're going to be using it um anyways i'm just kind of digging all this out and uh and opening this space up a bit just to give you a better idea Somewhat, I mean, like I said, it's going to be massive by the time it's all done, but we have a lot of different... I mean, right now we have three different places that are connected to enter and exit from. 
Um, long term, there's going to be a lot more, but that's just kind of where we're starting with at the moment because getting those three entrances are key. Of course, we're going to have to run it back to the agricultural area as well. All the major areas of the town need to have an entrance into the caves because it's our dense storage. We're going to be accessing this uh, quite often, right? Plus, it's going to give us a great place to store, like, make bulk amounts of, like, lanterns and store them here, you know. Uh, in addition to like the depositories and stuff but this makes a really nice central space for us and then right here I'm just kind of digging I thought a little a little uh, like bit of water there around that pillar would be quite nice I filled the water in that lake that we set up earlier and then I came over here and added the water to this little lake and we're actually going to expand this out and have some sections that you access by boat and stuff like that um, in addition it's not going to be convenient in the least but it's going to be really really cool I think Okay, so um, I did look at the, <laughs> looked at the raw footage, and uh, yeah, the the bits that you just watched it was eight hours, eight hour, about eight hours of raw footage, uh, basically compressed into ten minutes. <laughs> so uh, to give you an idea, um, but we did get a bit of work done, and this was actually a really good project for me to work on, kind of while I was sick, because it was just so much speed building. Um, my sickness is kind of somewhat starting to pass, but I still have the coughing and hacking thing going on um, but coming down here this is the first cave bit that we dug out and this is kind of what it looks like so I mean you can see sprinkles of the stone there's wood there's grass there's sea lanterns there's cobwebs you know there's a lot of stuff going on in these entryway sections um, which I quite love I'm actually I'm absolutely loving this area by the way and then we can look down there and see um, well you can actually you're right there okay I had leaves over my head um, you can look down there and see there's like a little waterfall thing going on which if you don't have the shaders you know it's gonna be really really blue coming down it's kind of clear for us but I actually like the water because it's a little bit more realistic uh, water's not generally overly blue <laughs> uh, so you can hear my in my voice uh, but uh, yeah if we continue on through of course this area is not done much at all uh, but this area just kind of comes through and it does and by the way look at all this stuff. I have stone for days I have so much stone Like I could fill the depository right now basically to give you an idea like that's why we need the dense storage Because we're gonna be farming up a lot of like massive bulk amounts of things here soon And so I need this place. It may not seem as important right now um, Because we haven't actually reached a point where we've been farming mass quantities of things but I already need it for different stones and netherrack so um, continuing on I did dig out some of this this actually was filled with water before I drained out all the water and just put stone over it I didn't bother going and getting the sponges and then uh, I started digging some of this space out um, but as you can tell I mean this isn't even a portion of the cave structure you know uh, but it's already getting massive I think and you can look out over there and it's really really far uh, if we continue on over here though uh, I'm really excited about this and doing the storage this way personally I know some people may not be as crazy about it but I'm super super excited about it because I I don't know I was actually wanting some kind of a big cave area and originally I was planning on having it connect to like a big hobbit hole type thing uh, but I think this is going to be a lot cooler because it gives a little bit of backstory to our city before it was our city, basically. Um, and then we've basically just turned this into it. And actually, part of the part of the inspiration for that, when I was actually just laying in on the couch the other day watching TV, and uh, or I say TV, I was watching, I was Netflixing and chilling, right? Uh, because I was sick. And uh, I actually was not watching the show, though, that this was a reference. The Name of the Caves is a reference, too. But uh, I was actually watching season nine of walking dead <laughs> this is what i watched the other day but um but uh yeah so um oh the, the name of this cave though um see if anybody gets the reference and it is a show on netflix um i'm going to be calling it the winden caves so that's going to be the name of our caves um totally a reference maybe not so much elvin but that's okay because i love the show and that's what i want the name to be <laughs> And then, of course, it connects over here to the Fairberry Mines. So, and it comes out, like, right up here. Which, this was actually where, originally, the 
um, the footpath down to the mines was going to be was right in here. And it was actually going to just kind of curve around and basically be a bit open, but just basically lead down to the caves or down to the mines. Um, we will still have that little section, maybe that branches off from here, but it will go through the main cave network instead of just going straight down to the mines. That way it's a little bit more interesting kind of going down to there because you walk down and there's just this big open area. And I think right now the lowest point that we've got, not counting the bottoms of these little lakes, these little underground lakes that are starting, uh, we are down to Y43, but it will go probably all the way down uh, in spots. So this is just kind of more of like a more shallow cave section. Uh, there's so much stone that's been cleared out of here already. And imagine how much stone we're going to need this space just to store the stone that we get from digging out this space. But I will have plenty of stone forever and ever. And I've been trying to mine just a little bit of cobblestone, but most of the stuff I've been mining is stone because I do tend to have a lot of cobblestone. So around here, this bit of water is actually going to continue out. You'll be able to actually throw a boat in this and go off rowing around. Um, I'm planning on some big waterfalls as well. Uh, part of the inspiration behind this, and Bunny Bunny Bond will be super excited. I will put a little bit of Skyrim references down in here, uh, just for you, Bunny. Plus, I think it'd be cool. But uh, part of the inspiration on this, some of some of the area will be inspired by um, parts of Blackreach. Um, I do want the big waterfalls and stuff like that, which will be tying that stuff in. Right now, we just kind of have this little like fountainy part. But as we get lower down, there's going to be a little bit less overgrown, or quite a bit less overgrown, and more kind of mystical down there is kind of what I'm thinking. So we'll have the big waterfalls that go down um, to more of like a Black Reach esque inspired type area. So maybe it wasn't actually goblins, maybe it was Falmer that, uh, that used to inhabit these caves, but the Winden Caves. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, I don't know, I'll probably keep it goblins. But I don't know, maybe Falmer would be pretty cool too. So maybe we drove them out and destroyed them and everything. So over here, this is, uh, like, look at that. It's, like, super green, but there's it's not overly green. You can see the bits of wood, the bits of stone, the cobwebs kind of breaking up, the sea lanterns kind of poking through, and different things. Um, this is some of the more, like, heavily overgrown areas. Uh, these little entrances and... Uh, it's super, super, super lush up in here. And I actually kind of lucked out. I did not. I knew there was like a couple chasms down here, but I did not expect to actually plug into both of them already. So this little section, this is going to be um, basically a little store, a more, slightly more dense storage area. These little side rooms will have, you know, maybe like two or three things right along here and then maybe another one over here. Then So like four items, that's super dense. And, uh, but we actually plugged into both the chasms. Uh, one on each side, which is, perfect Where does, oh okay that's just a lighting bug looks like yeah it's just a lighting bug hey skeleton um but yeah so we've plugged into both these chasms which is actually kind of perfect because we're going to be using uh not really so much using these maybe a little bit but we will this will make clearing a little bit easier for these sections um having those chasms there and then over here um we plugged into yet another chasm right here this one's not as far down, but it's a little bit wider and stuff. So uh, we did kind of luck out on these, hitting both of these. So you can see this little room's a little bit larger. Um, this one actually is plugging up into a ruin. So this little section is going to be more of like a ruined, um, some kind of a ruined structure. Probably a stone structure. There will be some wooden structures as well, but this one's probably going to be kind of a little stone type building um, that, you know, the goblins have built over in that little section there. So, and of course, this little cobblestone here is denoting that we're kind of moving into a little bit more of like a ruined section, um, ruined stone and stuff like that. Maybe some wooden buildings down in here. Um, still having a bit of the overgrowth that's going to be carrying through, especially hanging from the ceilings up there. But uh, we are kind of moving into a little bit more of a ruined space. And then down in here, um, this is actually going to go into a, another little um, type room type structure. There are a little space, smaller space. And then uh, there's going to be some over in this side as well. But this is actually going to really open up too, though. So I think that's I think that's the work thus far. I think it's a pretty good tour of it. Um, of course, this right here is for hay bales. And also hay will be stored here as well. Um, but we'll be using hay bales for denser um, storage, I guess. Can you break the... You can break it. Okay, cool. There was, a, there was a time, I think. Or maybe it's a certain mod pack or something where you couldn't break those down. But... 
Um, and then over here, of course, we have pumpkins and then melons. And then by extension, we'll have melon slices and uh, jack-o'-lanterns and uh, carved pumpkins over here. So, And then also maybe, maybe the golden melons and the pumpkin pies. I don't know for sure. We may store those in there too. Just kind of mixing things up. Um, it won't, like I said, it won't be super, super convenient because they, I may be trying to get pumpkins and lanterns and pumpkins be over here and then lanterns, you know, a mile down the cave in, in that direction. But it's going to make it a whole lot more interesting. And we can always do mine carts that run between um, sections of this area. So, which would be pretty cool. Have mine carts maybe um, that run along, say, wooden platforms that are just kind of raised slightly above the ground. Um, would be kind of cool with like little pillars coming down, maybe like a little old um, goblin rickety minecart system or something like that would be kind of cool. But uh, but basically we're kind of doing this build as sort of a goblin build, but you have to remember, and it's actually kind of ties into uh, the theme build for my patron servers at the moment, which was time was the was the theme, and that's kind of kind of what we're doing here. Of course, I'm not entering the contest, you know, this is just for the patrons, but. Um, and this little area is dangerous, <laughs> but it, it does kind of play on that idea of time. So this this place is kind of worn down throughout time and has been repurposed as now a um, like an elven storage area, what they use as their storage area. So, um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think we got a pretty good dent put into the build, but it's still got a long ways to go, just for the baseline usage of it of being able to store various things that we need to be storing so sadly we're not going to finish our projects this week originally that was my intention was to get the storage area sorted enough in the mine connected and some stuff like that so that we could move on to new projects next week that's not going to happen it's probably going to be next week before we get everything that i wanted to get done because like i said i've been sick i haven't had a lot of playtime and the playtime i have had has some of it has been half-hearted like oh i don't really feel like doing anything you know i'm sick and uh yeah so <laughs> you guys know the drill, but, um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys are excited about this build. I'm personally super excited. I love lush caves and big open caves and I love building natural type stuff. And yeah, so that's what we're doing. <laughs> that's what we're doing. So yay. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe. If you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out and I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.